antidepressants that don't cause emotional blunting, that don't cause anhedonia, like 40-oxetine, maybe glutamates, they work just as well in people who are higher functioning and lower functioning. Love the question. So maybe emotional blunting and anhedonia that's either caused by or not benefiting from the SSRI is interfering with that behavioral and social connectivity. Love the question. Very interesting. It's a testable hypothesis. Is there any research on the effect of religion, spirituality, and faith-based communities? What a great question. In the, in the document that was prepared by the Office of the Surgeon General, they cite statistics that we've, well, we've all heard about this, that less than 50%, less than 50% of people in America um, would identify as being part of a church, a synagogue, or a mosque. And that's about a 25 to 30% drop in only 20 to 25 years. So that's one index of being part of a group. There, obviously, there's other ways one can be spiritual and so on. And we are seeing, in fact, in many of these surveys, not only are people less likely to participate in church, synagogue, mosque, and other spiritual groups, but less involved in community groups, community organizations, and so on. This is all coming down. And um, what's interesting is that there is an inverse relationship between membership of these types of organizations, spirituality, and suicide. And that's been reported for many, many, many years. So yes, there is a work on that. Would increase in group therapy improve the problem? It's hard to find group therapy options. I do think that's a testable hypothesis. There are data to show that group activities given not just in person but virtual can be uh, helpful to mitigate loneliness. Now, the data in this area is... Uh, quite scattered, just so what we call evidence variance. There's a lot of variation in the evidence, but that's, I think, more a function of the early stages of this area. This is not an area that has received that much therapeutic attention until the, mo the last five, 10 years. So what's there? There are evidence for CBT, evidence for group, evidence for social support. There's what's called SP, social prescribing, and there are data no surprise, that show decrease in loneliness. Uh, ruthless academicians who want to see the highest rigorous data. You see, academicians don't even believe a parachute works if you jump out of a plane because there's never been a placebo-controlled trial. <laughs> right? No one's been randomized to the parachute or the placebo, so they don't believe it. So this is the kind of silliness that goes on sometimes in academia. But that being said, we in fact do need obviously more rigor, but there are some data on that. How do we assist people with loneliness form meaningful relationships in a tech-run society? There's a tendency, there's a decrease, I agree, attendance in churches and groups. How do we do this? You know, I think that there's, um, it starts with most things. Remember Prochaska's model? I think it starts with contemplation. You know, we, we're, we, we've, we've been pretty contemplative. I was, I was certainly pretty contemplative about this. And then we have to be contemplative. I'm now landing, I'm a psychopharmacologist. I'm now, I've convinced myself that if I'm not socially prescribing something with my patient, I actually am doing less than I could be. I think prescribing socially is as important as prescribing the pill. And uh, yeah, that's what I believe, right? I believe it. And, and, and it's sort of, I guess it's kind of, kind of full circle for me here because it's, not, again, not something I, I, I previously considered. I'm now convinced it's the case. And um, so now, it's easy to say technology, I'll finish off on this point. I haven't landed on the conclusion technology is bad. I don't think technology is bad. I think technology is, is either or. And there's no question that technology helps a lot of my patients decrease their loneliness. Um, they can have meaningful relationships on these types of social accounts and so on. That's a different ball game than being on social media and having anonymous, uh, vitriolic, you know, very bullying type situations we all know taking place. So one maybe final plug and I'll stop is that we at the DBSA, Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, 
triple w, uh, triple w dbs alliance .org. DBSA has peer support. We have groups. We have support groups online. And that's another way people can connect. It can also provide psychoeducation for their condition. But these are things that I think we have to add. So for me, people say the treatment of mental illness is psychotherapy, neurostimulation, and pills. I don't disagree. I'm adding a fourth column. It's called social connectedness.